Good morning, friends. Pastor Zach here with you. Uh, we are starting a new unit today uh, entitled Wandering in the Wilderness. And if you remember last week, we talked about the book of Leviticus and we talked about all the different rules that the Israelites had to follow for sacrifice. And I want to tell you, I am so glad that we don't live in the old law anymore. I'm so glad that when Jesus came, we get to live under the new law and we don't have to sacrifice something every time we mess up. Uh, so that is a good thing. <clears throat> so today we're going to learn about Joshua and Caleb. Uh, before we do that, though, why don't we say a word of prayer? Lord, we come to you now. We thank you uh, for this time together. Lord, as Easter is approaching, we thank you uh, for your son Jesus and for his sacrifice and everything that he did. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you bless our time together. And uh, whatever we do today, Lord, we would do it for your glory. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So as I was saying, we're going to be talking about Joshua and Caleb and a few other leaders of the different tribes of Israel today. Uh, our Bible story comes from the book of Numbers, chapters 13 and 14. So if, if we were to look at our Bible, we have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and now the fourth book of the Bible is Numbers. Have you guys ever had to go to the hospital? Have you ever had to go and maybe get stitches or, you know, maybe you fell or something and you had to go to the hospital? Well, at the hospital, we have to trust that the doctors are gonna take care of us, right? That's why we go to the hospital is because they have been trained, they have been equipped to protect us. Well, the same can be said about following Jesus. When we follow Jesus, we are putting our trust in him. We are, we are asking and knowing that whatever he does for us is for our good. And so we have to put our trust in Jesus, just like we put our trust in the doctors when we go to the hospital. A funny story, so when I was in middle school, I was playing football, and we were doing up downs and if you guys don't know what those are you you run in place coach whistles you jump you fall to the ground as fast as you can and you get back up as fast as you can well, we were doing those and when i i went down i got something that stabbed into my my hand and when i got up i pulled it out and it was it was really gross so i had to go to the hospital to get it sewn up to get stitches well, when I got to the hospital, they put my hand in warm, soapy water to clean out the wound. Well, then I ended up falling asleep in the emergency room because there were some other patients that needed more help than I did. And so it took them a while to get back to me. But they got back to me, they fixed everything, and I was good, good as new. Uh, so I just want to remind you that, you know, even when we feel like we have to wait forever, God's timing, God's plan is still perfect. So as I said, we're starting a new unit, wandering through the wilderness, which means that we have a new big picture question. And that new question is this, what does it mean to sin? Think about that. What does it mean to sin? What a great question. The answer is that to sin is to think, speak, or behave in any way that goes against God and against his commands. Wow, that's pretty, pretty easy definition. Whenever we do something, even when we think something or when we say something that is against God, that's sinning. So when you, if you have siblings, if you're saying mean things to your siblings, that's sinning. If you are not listening to your parents, like if they tell you to clean your room and you're not listening, that's sinning because you're going against what God has plan for us so think about that that's a that's a lot to take in what is sin before we jump into our bible story let's let's take a rewind and and look at the the timeline of where we've been so far so after the israelites when they left egypt they traveled toward the promised land they camped out at mount sinai where god made a covenant with his people he gave them a guide how to live and how to help them understand his perfect holiness. 
They made it to the edge of the promised land. So they're so close. All they had to do was trust God and take over the land. But as we'll see in our Bible story today, the Israelites would not go into the land. So let's see exactly what happens when the Israelites are told to go into the promised land in this week's Bible story video. God's people had traveled out of Egypt and were almost to the promised land. God told Moses to send men to scout out the land of Canaan. This is the land God was giving to the Israelites. So Moses sent out one leader from each family tribe. Moses told the leaders to see what the land was like and whether the people living there were strong or weak, few or many. Moses had many questions. Is the land good or bad? Are the cities they live in camps or forts? Is the land good for farming? Are there any trees? Moses urged the scouts to be courageous. So the 12 scouts traveled throughout the land for 40 days. They cut down a cluster of grapes that was so big, it took two men to carry it on a pole. Then they went back to tell Moses, Aaron, and the other Israelites what they saw. The land is good. It is flowing with milk and honey, they said. But the people who live there are strong and the cities they live in are large and well protected. Then Caleb, one of the men sent to scout out the land said, we must go up and take possession of the land. We can certainly conquer it with God's help. Oh no! But other men disagreed. We can't go up against the people. They are stronger than we are. We look like grasshoppers compared to them. <laughs> the people were afraid and they cried all night. They thought Moses and Aaron had brought them to Canaan to die. The Israelites said, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Joshua and Caleb tore their clothes and said again, the land we explored is extremely good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will give it to us. Don't be afraid of the people living in the land. God is with us. The Lord spoke to Moses. How long will these people not trust me? God threatened to destroy all the people, but Moses urged God to forgive them. Moses reminded God, that he is patient, loving, and forgiving. Since Caleb and Joshua had followed God completely, God decided to let them enter the promised land. God said that the Israelites who did not trust him would wander in the wilderness 40 years and they would not enter the promised land. All of the spies who went to scout out the land died before entering, except for Joshua and Caleb. The Israelites rebelled against God because they did not trust him. Jesus trusted God perfectly. He took the punishment we deserve for our sin or rebellion against God. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sin and gives us eternal life. Wow, I, one of my favorite lines in that video says this, don't be afraid of the people living in the land. God is with you. Whew. What an encouragement. When you get scared, when you get afraid of something, guess what? God is with you. So you have no reason to be afraid. You have no reason to be scared. God is with you and he's going to, he's going to be with you. He's going to watch over you. The Israelites, though, they didn't listen to God. God sent out 12 leaders. And 12 is a pretty important number, right? Think about Jesus in the New Testament. He had 12 disciples. So God sends out 12 leaders. And two of them in particular, which they talked about, Joshua and Caleb. And I love that they describe this land as flowing with milk and honey. It's going to be a great land. And they said, hey, look, the the people here are big and their their cities are fortified 
but we shouldn't be scared. And Caleb said that. He said, we need to go now because if God is on our side, we will defeat them. But the other leaders were scared and they said, no, we can't. We can't go. They'll, we're, 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 we're not ready. Have you ever been in a situation where maybe you were scared and someone else was trying to encourage you to do something and, and you didn't want to uh, because you were, you were just too scared? I've been in that situation. Growing up, I was terrified of heights. But it's ironic because I love roller coasters. And I remember when I used to go on roller coasters when I was younger, the worst part is when you get on and then you've got the slow click, 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 click when you get to the top. And I was always so scared that the ride was going to break down and I was going to be stuck at the very top of the roller coaster. And I used to say, like, if I get stuck up here, I'm not walking down. They're going to have to, like, get a crane and, and, like, you know, carry me down because I'm way too scared. And that's how the Israelite leaders felt. And Caleb tried to encourage them. He tried to say, guys, don't be scared. God is with us. And that's, that's the message I want you all to understand, is that even when you're scared, God is still with us. And we shouldn't be scared. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. And if he's with us, no one can stand against us. Right? But what happens? They don't listen to God. They don't listen to Caleb. And God punishes the Israelites. He says, guess what? Since you don't trust me, none of you, including Moses, will get to see the promised land except Joshua and Caleb because they trusted Jesus. Can you imagine being so close to something you've always wanted to do or something you've always wanted to see? only to be told you'll never get to go in there. Picture it like this. Many of you know, I, I love Disney World. I love being able to go to Disney. I've been there a couple of times. I used to work there. But imagine being told we're going to Disney World and then you get to Disney World and you're standing at the front gate and you can see Cinderella's castle and you can smell all the different food that is cooking. But then you're never allowed to go in. You can only stand at the gate. Something you've always wanted. You've always dreamed of going to Disney World. But you can't. That's how the Israelites were. They, they could see the promised land. They saw what it was producing when, when the 12 leaders brought back the grapes. But they never got to experience it. Because their fear held them back. And God punished them for that. In our questions from kids video today, Pastor Brian's going to ask us about how we can trust people and who, who can we trust. So let's take a look at our questions from kids video to find out who we can trust. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Jacob from Eugene, Oregon asks, Last week, my friend promised to go to the movies with me, but an hour before the movie, he backed out. If I can't trust my friends to keep their promises, how do I know I can trust God? That is a great question, Jacob, and it really reminds me of the difference between people and God. You see, the problem is sometimes we will make promises to somebody and we will intend to keep them. And maybe your friend had every intention of making that movie, but something came up. Maybe he got sick or maybe his parents had something come up they had to do as a family. And so he had to break that promise. He didn't mean to. Other times we'll make a promise and something better will come up. We'll have something that we'd rather do. And so we choose to break a promise. And that just reveals our sinfulness, that we're all born in sin, and there are times that we do the wrong thing. The difference between us, though, and God is He's completely sovereign. He's in control, so nothing will ever come up to surprise Him and make Him break a promise. And also, He is sinless. He cannot break a promise because He's faithful. So while sometimes we will be let down by people, we will never be let down by God because He's in control and He's faithful. So you can completely trust in God. Whatever he says he will do, he will do. 
So why is it important to be a trustworthy friend then? What a great lesson that, you know, sometimes we, we try, when we make a promise, we try to keep it and we want to keep it, and sometimes we can't. I want to encourage you, though, to be trustworthy friends. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're going to be somewhere, show up. Be the friend that people can count on. Be the friend that's there. Uh, that's one of the things I try to do in my life. I try to just be there. I try to show up, try to keep my promises, uh, every everything. Uh, so be trustworthy. And when you, when you follow Jesus, you should be trustworthy. When we're, when we're focused on the Lord, we should be trustworthy to those around us. So we've been talking about defense and, and being scared and, and what might happen. Well, you guys know in China, there's called the Great Wall of China. And when the Chinese people built this wall, they were so scared of what might happen if, if the enemies got over the wall. And that's exactly what, what it was like with the Israelite leaders. They were so scared of their enemies. They didn't know what to do. But in China, today, still, a lot of people don't know that God kept his promise and that he sent Jesus to be a savior. So this week, I want to encourage you to pray for the people who may have never heard the good news of Jesus, the people who may not know who Jesus is. We should be praying for them. As we are in a new unit, we have a new key passage. And what's really cool about this, this is a couple of my favorite verses in the Bible. But these verses were actually on the Bible app. They were the verse of the day on Monday this week. Uh, so I think it's cool that we're learning about it. But it comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. When we put everything we've got into trusting the Lord, He's going to give us a straight path. He's going to lead us to the promised land. And I pray that when we get to a point, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking directly at myself, and I'm speaking to myself here, when we get to a point where we get scared, where we feel like there's no hope, I pray that we would trust in the Lord and that no matter what, even when it looks scary, we would know that Jesus has us and that he's going to protect us and he's, he's in control. Let's pray this morning. Lord, I come to you now and I thank you for this Bible story you've given us. Lord, I pray that we would have hearts like Caleb and Joshua where we would stand up when everyone else is scared and say, no, the Lord is with us. We can do this. Lord, I pray that I would do that in my own life. When things seem to go awry, when I get scared, when I don't know what to do next, Lord, I pray I would just turn to you and, and say, if you're with me, then who can be against me? Lord, I thank you for this time that we've had this morning, and I just pray that you would continue to help us grow closer to you and closer to each other as friends. Lord, we love you so much. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So I just want to remind you all, next Saturday, April the 9th, we're going to have our Easter egg hunt at 11 a.m. over in Revel Downs community, right, basically right across the highway from church. It's going to be a great time. We'll encourage you all to come if you're able. And then we're going to have a service on Good Friday, April the 15th at church at 7 p.m. And then we're going to have our Easter Sunday service, April 17th at 10.30. I'm excited for all of it, and I can't wait to see you all soon. I pray this week that you would stand up when, when you're scared and trust in the Lord to take care of you. I love you all, and I will see you next Sunday morning. Bye-bye.